In this video, we are going to see how to work with MATLAB. These are the topics that we are going to cover. First, we are going to see the introduction to MATLAB. Then we'll see about the MATLAB environment. And then we'll see how to work with MATLAB commands. First, let us start with introduction to MATLAB. As we all know, MATLAB is a high level language which has many specialized toolboxes for making things easier for us and it is like RC or C++ or Java so these are all the high level languages that we know already so MATLAB is similar to RC or C++ or Java so it's also a high level language and it was developed by MathWorks the latest version of MATLAB is R2020A which was released in March 19, 2020 why it is called as MATLAB? So from the word matrix, mat was taken and from the word laboratory, lab was taken and it was framed as MATLAB because it deals mainly with matrices. So because of matrix laboratory, it is called as MATLAB. This MATLAB is an interactive and interpreted language which is designed mainly for numerical and matrix calculations. So why you call it as an interpreted language? So line by line interpretation will be done here. And it is more interactive. You can give any input and you are able to get output. And MATLAB provides a language and environment for numerical computation, data analysis, visualization. And we can also be able to develop our own algorithm with the help of this MATLAB. MATLAB provides functions for many integer operations, real num uh, operations on real numbers, complex numbers, vectors and matrices and so on. These are the main functionalities of MATLAB. It can manipulate matrices and it can work with linear algebra and it also has some built-in functionalities which deals with data analysis, graphics and visualization and it also includes many other hundreds of functions. And it also provides set of toolboxes for image processing, signal processing, optimization, genetic algorithms, etc. Now we'll see about the MATLAB paradigms. As I already quoted out, MATLAB is an interactive environment. In the sense, the commands are interpreted one line at a time. So before interpreting the next line, the previous command will be interpreted so line by line interpretation will be done and the commands may be scripted together into a script file we call them as a matlab file or dot m file so we can create our own matlab file with some set of commands and this matlab has the basic data structure as matrix because it mainly works on matrices it deals with matrices so matrix dimensions are set dynamically in this MATLAB and the operations on matrices are applied to all elements of a matrix at once. So the operations on matrices is very simple in this MATLAB and it so as it is doing the full operation at once we need not put any loops or iterations in order to work with the matrices. So it makes the process more fast and efficient when we consider MATLAB we may be working with a command line or we may be creating yum files with functions where we can give the input and we can get the output and then we can also have mat files which store large amount of data so if you'd like to have some data to be stored we'll go for mat files and simply if you would like to execute single command at a time means I can uh, execute as if we are working on the uh, DOS command, working with the DOS command. Here too we can work with commands and here also we can work with M files which contains set of MATLAB commands. Next we'll see about MATLAB environment. MATLAB window will be looking like this. These are all the components of MATLAB window. Workspace, command window, command history and file editor window. First, let us see what is workspace. So in the left side top, we have the workspace. The workspace displays all defined uh, values in the sense whether it is matrices or vectors or scalars. So all those things will be defined in this workspace. Next 
command window command window holds all the previously executed commands so if you would like to execute a command then that command will be maintained in the command history so it lists all the commands that we have entered previously so it will be below the workspace on the right hand side we had the command window so if i would like to execute any command in matlab i have to type in the command window and besides this we have the file editor window where we can write our own script script is nothing but collection of commands matlab commands when we work with the workspace so our workspace will be looking like this so whenever i create a variable automatically an entry will be made in the workspace when i double click a variable in the workspace it will open in the array editor the array editor will be looking like an excel so it holds the value of the variable if it's a matrix variable it holds the full matrix in that array editor next matlab interface so already i told you i can type any command in the command prompt so matlab commands are entered here that is in the command prompt as i showed you already command window is the place where we can enter command uh, all the matlab commands in the command window you have a command prompt and if you press the up arrow in the command window it will bring up the last entered command and if you want to bring up a command from some time in the past type the first letter and press the up arrow it will bring that and you can also set the current working directory so already by default it will set the uh, uh, working directory and if you would like to change it with some other working directory that is also possible here next matlab help matlab help is an extremely powerful assistance to learn matlab so it shows demos for implementation and matlab help can be opened by using the help menu that is available there any command description can be found by typing the command in the search field if you type something any command for example if you would like to know the syntax and uh, the details or the description of the square root command say so in the search just type sqrt it will give the syntax and description of the square root command this is one way of getting the help the other way of getting the help is in the command window just type help space command name for example here i have type help space sqrt so this will give you the details about the square root command in this way you can get the help from the command window also next we'll see how to work with commands before getting into the commands we should know about the variables used in matlab so as we have the variable names in the other programming languages here too variable names are there which can be any string of upper and lower case letters along with numbers and underscores but it must begin with a letter and we cannot have a keyword or a reserved word as a variable name and the variable names are case sensitive and what is a value any data associated with the variable is called as the variable uh, value and those values can be accessed using the variable names and variables have the type of the last thing assigned to them it won't be sticking on to a particular type so if an integer value is assigned to it it will be an integer variable next if a uh, string variable value is assigned to that variable then the same variable will be behaving as a string variable so depending upon the assignment automatically the variable type will be considered so the reassignment is done silently without any warning the last assigned values will be considered as the type of the variable next we'll see how to work with scalar values scalar values are nothing but the single values we are, it can also be called as singletons so if you would like to assign a value to a variable use the equal to operator for example if you would like to assign the value 32 to a so i can assign as a equal to 32 and just in the command prompt type a is equal to 32 and click enter when you press enter in the next line automatically it will show a equal to 32 and suppose if you type a again and press enter 
the last stored value available in that variable a will be displayed that is 32. To make another variable equal to one already entered say for example if you would like to assign the value of a to b so this can be done with this p b equal to a say if i type and if i press enter the value that is 32 from a will be assigned to b also and it will show b equal to 32. Now I change the value of a, a equal to 15. I have updated the value of a. Now the value of a has been displayed as 15. But if I display the value of b, it will show the last assigned value. b was only 32. So b, 30, b equal to 32 will be displayed. Now if I would like to suppress this intermediate output b equal to 32 means I have to use semicolon. Semicolon always suppresses the intermediate output. Now the value of two variables can be added with the help of the arithmetic operator plus for example if I have a equal to 10 if I uh, use the operator plus to add a plus a it gives the answer as a n s s 20 or if you would like to assign it to another variable b equal to a plus a c now the value b value of b will be equal to 20 that's possible next we'll see about vectors what is a vector vector is a list of numbers so already I told you singleton or scalar. Scalar is a single value. If I would like to have collection of values or set of values or list of values, it is called as a vector. How vector is defined in MATLAB? Vector is defined with the help of square bracket. Now let us see how to define a vector. Here I have created a vector with the name test underscore results. Test underscore results is equal to square bracket starting square bracket the values are 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.54 0 0.7 0 0.89 0 0.21 so how to separate the values if it is a it can be row vector or it can be column vector if it is a row vector it should be separated by comma so if it is separated by comma see the result so when i enter these values are assigned to it the output is test underscore results equal to 0 0.5000 so on like that it has been assigned suppose if i would like to create a column vector use semicolon to separate the content if you have to create a row vector you have to use comma if you would like to use a column vector use semicolon so here see the values are separated by semicolon so you have to use square bracket to give the values list of values but if each value is separated by semicolon, then it will create a column vector. The row vector can be converted to column vector or the column vector can be converted to row vector with the help of the transpose operator that is single quotes. So for example, here we have created a row vector. And now near the name of the row vector, if I give single quotes, it will convert it into a column vector. Next we will see about the matrices. A MATLAB matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. Here scalars and vectors are regarded as special cases of matrices. If you consider a scalar, it is a single value. It shows that there is only one row and only one column. It is a one cross one matrix, that's all. If you consider a vector, it, it may be a row vector or it may be a column vector. If you consider row vector, so for example, there is only one row with n number of columns 1 cross n if you consider a column vector there is only one column but n number of rows we'll say n cross 1 so uh, whether it is a scalar or a vector it's a type of matrix and matlab allows you to work with a whole array at a time you can create matrices or generally that's nothing but they are the arrays of any size using combination of methods for creating vectors so for example already you know if you like to create a row vector you have to use comma and if you like to create a column vector you have to use semicolon now if you like to use if you like to create a matrix then use both the comma and semicolon together so for example if I would like to create a matrix as result say see how it has been created first row has been taken first row values are 1 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 0.6 comma 0 0.3 so the first row ends here to show the end of the row i have to use semicolon because i have to start with the next row 
so 2 comma 0 0.3 comma 0 0.33 comma 0 0.75 that ends the second row put a semicolon so the combination of comma and semicolon will be used to create the arrays here matrix a special type of matrices can be created with the help of this MATLAB so for example if I would like to create a matrix of full zeros a built-in function is available that is zeros it takes two arguments first argument refers to the rows number of rows and second argument refers to the number of columns here if I say zeros of 2 comma 4 it will create a matrix with two rows and four columns containing the values zeros and it has been assigned to a when I display the value of a completely it will have uh, zeros for in two rows and four columns next if I would like to create another matrix if it is a square matrix say for example if I give zeros of 5 it will create a square matrix where the number of rows and number of columns are same the number of rows and number of columns will be 5 so it is equivalent to zeros of 5 comma 5 next if I would like to create a special matrix with all the values as 1 then I have to use the function once ones of rows comma columns similarly if I would like to create any random matrix I have to use a rand function next if I would like to create an identity matrix I can use rows comma eoe function with argument rows comma columns a MATLAB always refers to the first value as the number of rows then the second as the number of columns next we'll see how to clear variables whatever variable you are creating will be available in the workspace now if you would like to clear them you have to use clear all command clear all command will clear all the variables that has been created and which are available in the workspace now if you if you would like to cre uh, clear a specific variable you can clear with clear space variable name that will clear only that variable next how to access the matrix elements if I would like to access a matrix element then I have to use the syntax variable name that is the matrix name and within the bracket you have to specify row number comma column number because an element is a single number within the matrix or a vector so if you would like to access it you have to say where, where this element is to which row and to which column that element belongs to generally in excel this reference will be done by column comma row but in matlab the reference of a matrix element will be done by row comma column for example if i would like to access the element in the position uh, third row fourth column say i have to refer it as results of results is the matrix name so results of three comma four suppose if i would like to assign a new value to that position so how i can assign results of 3 comma 4 is equal to 10 so in the third row fourth column the value has been changed to 10 so for example with the value available there if i would like to multiply 100 for example in the third row fourth column with the value that is available there multiply 100 say it will be multiplied and that will be assigned to the same position results of 3 comma 4 so in the third row fourth column already a value 1.998 was there and it was multiplied with 100 and now it is 198 and how to access matrix rows a special symbol colon can be used for that you can use this symbol to access multiple values from a matrix generally colon refers to all so to access all columns of a row I can use colon for example matrix variable name and within the bracket give a particular row number and if I say uh, instead of giving the column a particular column number if I give colon it refers to all columns in a particular row for example results of 4 comma colon what does it mean fourth row but all column values so it will refer the fourth row but all column values so it will take 4.7.6.1 next to access all rows of a column particular column so for the first argument give colon so it refers to all the rows but you are giving a special column number next 
about the comment statement in MATLAB. The comment line begins with the character percentage symbol. So percentage is used for single line comment. And if you would like to give multiple line comment, that is also possible. As your C or C++ or Java, here too you have the same multi-line comment, slash star. And then you can give your comment statements and then it should be end up with star slash. Next, use of semicolon in MATLAB. Semicolon indicates the end of statement. However, if you want to suppress and hide the MATLAB output for an expression, add the semicolon after the expression. But if you would like to see the output means don't give the semicolon. Next, we'll see how to read a value and to display a value. Input is a function that is used to read a value. It takes a single argument. Suppose if I would like to mention the string enter a value while getting the input, then that enter a value should be given as an argument for the input function and it should be given within single quotes. And so this input function will read an input value here and it has been assigned to a variable a. So it has input a value and it will read a value and it will assign it to a. Next, if I use the function disp, disp is to display a value. Disp of a will display a value. Now let us see how to write and execute a script. So in the file menu, select new and select a MATLAB script. Script is nothing but a simple program, that's all. It opens the editor, editor window where you can type the code. So in the editor window, type these four lines. First line is clear all. That is to clear the variables that has already been created in the workspace. Next, a comment statement. The, to specify that, this program is to read and display a value. Next, I'm going to use input function or input command in order to read a value. This will get an input from the user and it will be assigned to A. Next, I'm going to display the value A. After typing these four lines, save the file. When you save the file, save with the extension .m. After that, click the run option or from the menu or an arrow symbol will be there which shows the run command. You can choose that so that the program gets executed. So how it gets executed? When it executes, it will ask for the user's input. So where it will ask for the user input? In the command window. User can give the input in the command window and in the next line, in the command window itself, you can get the output. That's how you have to write and execute the script in MATLAB. Next, these are the operators in MATLAB. Arithmetic operators, relational operators, logical operators, bitwise operators and set operators operators so these operators are available in the link that has been given below you can go to that link and see about the all the list of operators that is available when you see the arithmetic operators it is specially uh, meant for matrix and specially meant for array there is some differentiation using a period symbol they are differentiated by the period symbol you can go through that next one is the control structures Control structures are defined by two types of statements, conditional and loop control statements. So here in MATLAB, we have two types of conditional statements. One is if and the other one is switch. As you had in C and C++, here too you have if and switch control conditional statements. Next one is if you would like to execute iteratively, repeatedly, we will go for loop control statements. Here we have two types of loop control statements. One is for and the other one is while. So a reference is given there, you can click and you can go to that a particular uh, link and you can see the various control structures available in MATLAB. Next we are going to see about Octave. Octave is similar to MATLAB. Octave is also known as GNU Octave. It is one of the free alternatives for MATLAB and it is mainly used in solving the linear and non-linear problems and other all the operations that is available in MATLAB and it is more compatible with MATLAB. So the link to work with Octave in online is given below. So you can choose that link to work with Octave online or you can download Octave. That is the next link is given. You can download it and you can work in your system. So these are all the references.
Thank you.